Hey guys, welcome back to the DNN Medical Series. This is your girl Nikki, and today I'll be doing some respiration again, and I'm talking all about the lung today. So I'm going to try to give you guys a cartoon, and then I try to give you guys an actual photograph so you can appreciate it. But I use a cartoon first because not all specimens looks exactly how it should be. So the first thing we want to know about the lung is the different lobes so and the different areas, right? So let's start with like labeling the different areas of the lung. So when I say area, I mean the surfaces. So we have an apex, which is the top of the lung. So the apex is the highest point of anything. So you would assume this is the apex. Then we have the costal surface. So the costal surface, when you hear costal, think about the ribs. So these are the ones that the, these are the, this is the surface that the ribs make an impression on. So we call this surface the costal surface. So if you see a lung outside the body, you will see the impression or the depression made by the ribs on these areas. So we have the apex, the costal surface, and the diaphragmatic surface. So when we talk about diaphragmatic surface, we talk about the the area that rests on the diaphragm. So we have an apex, costal surface, and a diaphragmatic surface. And the other surface that we have is the mediastinal surface. When we talk about the mediastinal surface, we're talking about if we turn it around and you can see the hilum. So when I say hilum, I'm talking about an area where there is blood vessels, veins, and the bronchus. Here, all the blood vessels go through the lung in the hilum. So if I turn this photograph around, you can see the area where all the blood vessels and veins are leaving the lung, and we call that area the hilum, and that surface where the hilum is is a mediastinal surface. So what are the surfaces of the lungs again? We have a costal surface, a diaphragmatic surface, as well as a mediastinal surface on the underside, right? And here is the apex of the lung. So let me just jump into the different fissures of the lung. So the right and the left lung are different, as you can clearly see here. So the right lung has two fissures. So it has a horizontal fissure right here, as well as an oblique fissure. And the left lung has only an oblique fissure. So be careful when you're answering those exam questions so, because they'll ask you about the horizontal fissure in the left lung. And you should know that there's no horizontal fissure in the left lung. The only fissure in the left lung is, a, is an oblique fissure. Right, so now that I told you guys the fissure, the surfaces, I'm going to tell you the names of the lobes. So I did it in this specific order for you guys to appreciate which areas the fissures separate. So here we have the superior lobe. So we're starting at the right lung. So this is the superior lobe. This one here in the middle, you'd call it the middle lobe. And this one is the inferior lobe. So the right lung has three lobes, as opposed to the left lung that has only two lobes. So it has a superior and an inferior lobe. That's the left lung. So the difference between the right lung and the left lung is basically two fissures on the right, one fissure on the left, three lobes on the right, and two on the left. So let's see what the horizontal lung separates. So this is a popular exam question. So the horizontal lobe would separate the superior lobe from the middle lobe, as you can see here. And the oblique fissure would separate the middle lobe from the inferior lobe. Can you see? The oblique fissure does that. So whenever I ask you, what does the oblique fissure separate in the right lung, you'd say it separates the middle lobe from the inferior lobe. And what does the horizontal fissure in the right lung separate? It separates the superior lobe from the middle lobe. And in the left lung, it's pretty easy because it's just one and it just separates the superior from the inferior lobe. So one last time to just jump over 
the surfaces, the lobes, and the fissures. So here, just for labeling purposes, we have the apex. Right now, let's look at the three surfaces. We have the costal surface where the ribs or the rib cage makes their impression. We have the diaphragmatic surface that rests on the diaphragm. And we have the mediastinal surface where the hilum is if you turn it around and see the area where the blood vessels come through. So that's costal surface, diaphragmatic surface, as well as mediastinal surface. We have three lobes on the right lung superior lobe, a middle lobe, and an inferior lobe. Two lobes on the left lung, a superior lobe, and an inferior lobe. On the right lung, we have three fissures. We, two fissures, my bad. We have an horizontal fissure that separates the superior lobe from the middle lobe, and an oblique fissure that separates the middle lobe from the inferior lobe. And on the left, we have only one fissure, which is the oblique fissure which separates the superior lobe from the inferior lobe. So that's it for the surfaces, the lobes, and the fissures. Now I'm just going to change my photograph and tell you guys a little bit about the impression the different organs make on the lung. Right, so now guys, I'll tell you guys about the impression that different organs make on the lung. So when I say impression, I'm talking about this is the depression that you see here. It's important for you to know which organ like make these impressions, which organs are situated here that makes these impressions. So if this area of the lung is damaged, which other organ can be damaged as well? So I purposely, uh, bl uh, what do you call this, blur the, the labeling so you guys don't get confused with the labeling as well as we talk when I'm talking about the impressions of the lung. So just before I jump in the impression, just know that the impression for the right lung is also different somewhat from the left lung, but they have their similarities. So again, this is the apex of our lung. Good. This is our diaphragmatic surface of both lungs. And this now is the mediastinal surface I was telling you about. Remember I told you guys about the hilum, where the blood vessels, the arteries, the veins, the bronchus, hair. It goes traveling through the lung or supplying the lung. This is what we call the hilum. So this is the mediastinal surface. So apex, diaphragmatic surface, and mediastinal surface. So this is the right lung again. And this is my left lung. Another important thing is this that is coming down from the hilum. So you'll see this ligament right here coming down from the hilum. And they'll probably ask you the these in exam and this is the pulmonary ligament so if they ask you that don't be shy you say yes i learned it on the dnn medical series and it's the pulmonary ligament the ligament that comes down from the hilum so now for the impression i'm just going to tell you guys the major impressions on each so let me start with the right lung so the first impression you can see right here look can you see this I don't know if you guys have ever eaten a candy cane, like those little red candies, red and white candies you get in Christmas times. Yes, it looks like a walking stick, like an old man walking stick right here. Can you see? Or some people can just say the number seven if you don't know what a candy cane is or a walking stick. So this impression on the right lung, be specific, is made by the what do you think? It's the groove for the azygous vein. So the azygous vein is on the right. Please remember this. This groove that looks like a candy cane is made by the azygous vein. Another important groove is above this is right here. Can you see this groove right here? This is the groove for the esophagus. Your esophagus that helps in digestion, right? So look. Orientate yourself, candy cane, azygous vein, above it, the esophagus. Beside the esophagus is the trachea, a little groove made by the trachea or your windpipe. Another one, another little impression made here is by the brachiocephalic vein. 
but it's not very prominent but it can be there depending on the specimen and here you see a little notch can you see a little notch like a little dip in the lung the apex coming down a little dip this is basically a groove for your first rib so before i jump into these grooves over here let us just review these so the candy cane is made by the azygos vein above this we have the esophagus Beside the esophagus, we have the trachea. Beside the trachea, we have a little groove for the brachiocephalic vein. The little notch here is made by the first rib. So this other one going down, can you see this big groove? This is one of the biggest groove on the right lung. Is made by the superior vena cava. The superior vena cava, SVC, makes the biggest group or one of the biggest group on the right lung. And right about here, a little bit below the SVC, you know the SVC is going to the heart. So right here we have a cardiac impression, like an area of the heart that rests on the right lung is about here. I think those are the major ones for the right lung, so let's just review it one last time. Candy cane made by the azygos vein. Above the azygos vein, we have the esophagus. Then we have the trachea. Beside the trachea, we have the groove for the brachiocephalic vein. The little notch here is a notch or the groove for the first rib. This big impression going down is a groove for the superior vena cava goes to the heart so under it we'll have a little groove on the right for the cardiac impression and that's basically the major grooves on the right lung i'm not saying there aren't others but i'm saying these are the major ones so let's jump over to the left lung so on the left lung you see this big groove it's one of the biggest thing ever and this is the groove what do you think it will be if you can guess left and right lung, I would say this is a groove for the aorta. So this is a groove for the heart, the arch of the aorta. So that's on the left. Remember, on the right, we have the little candy cane making the azygos vein. On the right, we have the azygos vein, sorry. On the left, we have the groove for the arch of the aorta so the aorta is a very big vessel and it's high pressure so you'd expect that it makes a very big impression so here we have that another thing here similarity similarly we have a little group for the esophagus and the trachea right here and about here we have the group for the subclavian artery and about here again we have a little group for the first rib and the major, major, major groove on the left lung is this big impression right here. Like it's just like a punch in the lung. Bam! A big punch in the lung. And this is the groove or the cardiac impression. This is literally like where majority of the heart sits. So the heart makes a big impression on the left lung. Not the right lung, on the left lung. So on the right, it makes a small impression. But on the left, the heart makes a big impression. That's why you'd expect this because the heart is basically on the left side of the body. So let's just run over that for the left one again. So here we have the big, big groove here. And this is for the arch of the aorta. Here we have the trachea and the esophagus. Beside that, we have the groove for the subclavian artery. Down a little bit below, we have the groove for the first rib. And this big impression made here is by the heart. So we call it the cardiac impression. And from the cardiac impression, we have a little thing. Can you see a little bend? We call it the cardiac notch. So can you see, guys, the grooves are not very hard to remember you just have to orientate yourself and know which organs are on or vessels are on that specific side so just a very short run through i don't want to to confuse you guys or anything so a short run through of all the impressions so let's start with the right lung say them with me candy cane is the azygos vein above this we have the esophagus beside this we have the trachea 
and the little notch here we have the groove for the first rib excellent going down we have the groove for the superior vena cava and a little bit below that we have a small cardiac impression on the right so that's basically the major groups on the right now let's jump over to the lung we see this big groove here and this big groove here is the arch of the aorta the one above it is the esophagus and the trachea here we have a little subclavian <coughs> excuse me we have a little subclavian Archery groove right here, and this little notch we have a little groove for the first rib. And this big and the major impression on the left lung is the cardiac impression where the height basically sits. Below that, we have the cardiac notch. Okay, and coming from the left lung, guys, one last thing is this little sometimes you see this little flap of the left lung this here this area seems extended in some lung we call here the lingula when you talk about lingula we say it means a tongue because it looks like a tongue when you see it's just extended here so that's just another point to note so that's it for the impressions the surfaces the lobes and the fissures of the lungs i hope you guys understand what i said i'm just going to throw in a real picture real quick so you guys can just have an appreciation of the different lobes and what the right and left lung actually look like not in a cartoon format but a real life format so that's all for our lung video today and i want to thank you guys so much for listening if you have any comment or any question just drop them in the comment section below and don't forget to like comment, share, and subscribe to the DNN Medical Series. Until next time, see you soon. Bye!